Good morning, everyone. I'm back. I'm back and back. So before we start the last panel, I just thought we might start the stitching of this third panel onto the side. So let's just have a little look. I just want to have a look at the design and where we should sit it. Um, I think I might put it here here why because there's then a little bit of a gap between that stitched and that stitched panel where if I put it this side they're both side by side so I think this is the spot for it now ah yes I've got a gap here where I left it open so that if I stitched stitched the exterior in the same style as this as I had started out I needed this gap so I could turn everything the right way so I actually need to close this now I've forgotten that that was there so just going to jump on the sewing machine I won't pause the video I'll just leave it the sewing machines you know a meter away so just as Gail would say talk amongst yourselves <clears throat> And I'll jump on my sewing machine and run. Okay. It was that quick. Nice and quick. All right. So that is now closed. Now, what did we decide? We're going to put it on here so what I do for the cladding scenario of course if you made a second box out of all the panels you would then use the sewing machine to the to um, join the top edge because they sort of sit inside each other if that makes sense so what I'm going to do for this particular style is pin It together so that I can come along that edge and slip stitch everything into position so I put a pin at the top a pin at the bottom just to secure it and then a pin in the middle now remembering there the lining had a half an inch seam if you can see you probably can't see can you see that stitch line oh barely it's half an inch away from the edge. So I've got all this space that I can stitch into to join all my corners. And you've always got to keep the the corner of the side that hasn't yet got its pretty piece nice and square. So my stitching needs to tuck into itself. On those edges without interfering with the previous edge this one's not too bad because it's the final edge to come in to finish the, the three of them into that location so that's really easy so let me just get a pin into there this is really just to hold it from slipping up and down keeping it all nice and even back up to the top look at that it works perfectly that's good. That means when I did my stitching, I didn't pull too much <clears throat> on the fabric panel, therefore distorting it. And that then should fit across the top there. Okay. All right. So it's all pinned. So all I did then is I got myself a needle and thread. Now where it was cream, I used cream. And where it was blue, I used blue. So let's get some blue first. That was purely just to disguise my stitches. You don't have to. If you want to see the journey that you took, well, you could use any coloured thread. But I decided that I would use a few different coloured threads just to sort of help them to disappear. And being that I've got blue both sides, I can come in here 
and really make sure it's stitched. And if the stitches that I place are seen, it really doesn't matter because it's blue. And I can even come through the core fabric. And see where I've come in with the, the angle of my needle? Let me zoom in a little bit. I've come across, so I'm gaining distance by moving along, but when I come through, I then do a tiny little stitch to take me back to the other side. See how the needle is straight? So once again, go back in where I came up, but scoot to the side a fraction. Don't go too far because you want it nicely sealed. So you don't want, you know, two centimeter stitches. So I'm sort of doing about quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And then back straight through and then coming in again at a little bit of an angle to move me along and then back through. That's it. And then when I get out of this zone that is all blue fabrics, I'll change to the cream thread just so that it's a little hidden. Now, if the blue finishes and on the other side, cream start, oh, sorry, if the blue is still going and on the other side, the cream starts, then all I did is just be a little bit cheeky and try and disguise my stitches within the, the wadding and the layers, and which was pretty easy because there's so many layers. It actually worked out pretty simple. So I'm coming up to that now where the blue is finishing and I'm into the cream. So I'm sort of going to bury my needle in behind the cream layer. Because it is thick fabric, I can sort of sneak my blue thread in there and no one's going to no one's going to know. It's only a centimetre or two and then I'm pretty much finished with blue on the opposite side. So I'm not too concerned. Okay, so I'm now just going to knot that blue off. No one will notice. Or you guys will, probably. Let's grab some cream cotton because we're now we've got a bit of cream here. And we're nearly down that one side. So that's how simple it is to join together. I was a little concerned at first. I thought, oh great, I've changed the pattern. I've changed what everyone's doing. But I'm really pleased I did because I'm sort of enjoying this hand stitching side of things. Now, because I'm into the creamy colored fabrics, I'm going to scoot along with the, the needle coming through both sides completely because I can. Just keep an eye on your corner that all your ends meet up, which should happen. down to the corner so now it's just a case of make sure everything lines up put a few extra stitches in cannot hurt as you're binding it all together it's not like it's going to um, leak that's not even the right word you know things will fall out because you haven't quite stitched enough there because we have the lining Nothing is going to come out of this bag. As long as it's pinned together with a few little stitches and it doesn't look like it is going to split, you're there. Now I'm just going to continue with my cream thread and just sort of bury it in the layers, trying not to pop through that blue on the opposite side. Even if I did... I might be able to come up in that boro stitch or next to it. No one's going to know that there's a little stitch in there. There you go. Then I can scoot along a little bit. And 
down through to there and then along a little bit through to there so it's quite quick and that's our third side in place How to think about the loops too and I've worked out how I'm going to do those and I'm going to use the cream fabric this fabric here in the corner I'm just going to keep it simple I'm gonna not complicate things by having lots of colors on my tabs I decided just keep it simple I think is the case I still haven't decided what I'm gonna do with the strap I've got a couple ideas, but I'm still thinking through it. One is using some cord, but I need to go through my supplies and see if the cord is thick enough. In my head, I think it is, if I remember correctly. But I just need to check if the cord is not thick enough. I'm sort of into the blue zones now, but I'm going to bury my stitches. And I don't think it will matter because they'll be hidden within the work. Yeah, if my cordage is a bit too thin to do the job, I probably wouldn't go out and buy more. But I think I have some really thick stuff somewhere. So I just want to explore that option first. Plan B will be to make a strap like everyone does in those videos. So that's that's what I'm thinking at the moment. So stay tuned. Don't want to get too far ahead of myself. I haven't even finished the final piece. I wish I had the stencils that I ordered but my project is marching along and so I don't have another pattern to uh, utilize for the the final side but I do have a fabric sitting over there that I haven't yet chopped into well I've used bits of it I think this and that little guy that one there comes from it so I might have a little look over that and it's actually big patches is the overall design this these little packs that we've been nibbling at here um, the lady that sold them on her store she's cut this panel up where I noticed that she had it by the meter so I actually purchased another piece so there's an opportunity that we cut a full rectangle a full square out that will sort of keep us within the design feature of having a feature square it won't be a stitched one but it will still have the same concept of we had a square on each side a large square on each side and then we went from there so that's the theory. Okay, so I'm now in this corner and I nearly jiggered it up. I nearly stitched that closed. So I would have had that effect, a triangle, but we can't. We need to leave that open. So I'm going to bring my needle back through there. Because I went a little bit too far and I have to wait until that final panel comes in. So I need to scoot back. So then that has that final. I'm going to now just work my way up this side. I'll just pop a couple more stitches in here and then I might end it off and get another piece of cotton. It's getting a bit too... Too short and because that piece is not in place yet the decorative one I can stitch a bit quicker okay 
we'll go with cream. Okay, we're ready to go again. Now, once again, I can jump a little bit on the inside because there's no, oops, yep, no, that's all right. But I do need to be careful on this side because it's got the decorative piece. So I don't want my tacking stitch or my, my joining together stitch. My hem to be visible. Lovely. So it doesn't take too long to add your panels. So thick, it's a wonder I haven't broken the needle. It's holding up quite well. There we go, nearly there. And as I mentioned a hundred times, I'm leaving that top edge open at this stage because we have to put our little loops in there. We'll do loops another time. Let's just get our sides sorted. And we're coming up to the end now. Okay, and that's lined up nicely. There we go. Just make sure that that is spot on. Look, if you make an error, it's easy enough to slide a quick unpick through and undo your work like it's it's no problem so don't worry if you stitch something incorrect just undo it okay We're done all right we now have let me get rid of those pins We now have our third side on our little bag. Look at that. Is there a pin there? Yes, there's a pin. There we go. And it's holding really well. Let me zoom out a little bit, guys, so you can see. Look at that. Once that third panel, fourth panel goes in, that little bag is going to hold beautifully. I love it. There's our new piece. Oh, great. Okay, let's have a play. Now we get to piece together our final one. So here we go. I've got a lovely little pile of them all stitched and all cut ready to size. So as I come up with different ideas for them, they're pretty much ready to go. So the bottoms and the bases, and I've got my lining in place as well so love it love it all right now this fabric i was talking about if we decide to go down that track just jumping up to grab it is this one i definitely don't have another stencil do i no because we just established that the lines in this one are just singular lines not dot um you know Okay, that's all good. Let's have a look at this piece. Up there, that one there catches my eye. And it's actually just here. That's a classic image. 
do we cut him out and make him a patch? I think so. I think we're going to do it. So, is he the right one to take? Doesn't really matter by the looks of it. That one's right through at the, at the fold. This one's near the edge. He is, are we gonna do this? Yeah, I like him. I can do probably a little bit more boro stitch on this piece instead of the decorative stitching we could probably focus on on just straight lines let's see okay so i've got to trim that so there's our feature square guess he's not as big as the others so that would give me a bit more room to piece So let's have a look at our box now. We've got stitching there halfway along that side and stitching there. So if we're going to do it, he needs to be either top corner here. Am I overthinking it? Probably. Um, I do like this little morsel. Maybe he could slide in there. Another little bit. Oh, we have this guy too. We ne didn't do anything with. Oh, why don't we? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's use him. I like how that is nestled. We can do some stitching around there to make him a feature that's different we could probably slide him in i don't know if i like him in there it's like a little bit lost I liked it without him. I don't think so. Um, no, put him down. Stop picking him up. I've got some of this blue. We could... Dragonflies. We could have a pop of dragonflies come through. Sort of need them in their entirety because they overlap. Mm. No. This little morsel. Oh, that's a different one. I don't know about that piece. I like that piece. And I do like that piece. If we do a bit of bore, maybe then I can bring that piece in. It's a little bit blocky.
There's some beige. I'm sure there was some little morsels of beige left. You know, the one that was quite crepey. There it is. Where's this moon one? Do we not put moon? It's quite interesting, isn't it? Trying to piece color and that's a little morsel that was left. I do have some bits of those left. Oh, I have these here left too. Maybe we can do something like that. Yeah, I like that. We are heading in that direction with our piece. Is that too much? Oh, I don't mind it. Very um, considered. It's not fussy. So then do we break it up with this little guy as we step our way up there? Then I sort of feel like we need something a bit random. I do like that. What about... So I've got these little itty bitty bits left. No. No, it competes with this piece, doesn't it? Sort of don't mind that. I know it disappears a little bit, but it actually... I don't mind it. It takes away from that diagonal drift that's happening there, which is good for the eye, but it's probably a little boring where just a random little morsel can sometimes just create doesn't have to join yeah, don't, don't mind that it really looks like we're trying to repair something Yeah, what other bits do we have? Is there any more furry selvages? I don't think so. I think we used, yeah, I think we used them all. I do like that I get the remaining of that, a scrap of that, a little bit more of that. He's now just about on everything. And I might be able to get two X's up there. Can do some great boro stitch in here. I think that's it. Yeah. It's like a little little cluster. I might leave it at that because, like, where do, where do you stop? Where do you stop? That blue. I don't think that's anywhere. Do we prefer that blue down there instead of that? No, I'm going to leave it at that because I think that'll look really, really nice with the... Um, stitching all over it, the cream. See that flower never found a home, but it's sort of, I don't know, it just doesn't feel like it suits the project. Mm. 
That's a more interesting piece of indigo there. Very pretty morsel. I do like that because it drifts between. Yeah, that's it. Mm. <laughs> yes, that was nearly an evil laugh then. Very good. Happy, happy. Oh, look at that one. Anyway, stay focused, girl. That's all me bits. Plenty of morsels left. Like, oh gosh, you could just, you could stretch that out. So, here we go. We have our little panel. Different again. I love how they're just so different but similar. Now I've flicked, flicked that. Is that where it was? Yeah. Very good. So, yeah, every side is different on the bag. So if you were with some friends and you wanted to do a little bit of boro stitch, um, you know, one evening, you could pop your little bag on the desk and everyone could have a good look at it and decide what sort of style they like. Do they want a soft stitched piece? Do they want to do some botany, something a little bit more striking? Then piecings of fabric, more of a beige, more of a blue. Yeah, really pretty. Plus I've used morsels of everything that is drifting around the piece so like these little flowers here that's probably my favorite fabric we've got it here a little morsel here doesn't appear on this side but it will reappear on the final side i love that i think that is so so good okay so there's everything pinned now it's just a case of running through with some slow stitch and then having a think while we do that about, um, where's my needle? What we do decoratively, you know, that's by doing this little invisible stitch through, it's just a good time to have a good look at the piece. Take your time. And um, have a think. Probably should be using blue. But I might just stitch this little guy in here down. I won't overcast stitch it because I think that little pale piece I will overcast stitch in the crochet cotton. So that'll catch its raw edges. I'm just going to scoot sideways through this panel. By doing this little white one too, it's actually going to secure the ones that are underneath it in the background. So I'm just whizzing down here. I'll be pretty confident I'm going to use overcast stitch on that big white piece. Might as well just catch a few stitches in this little guy while I'm here. In fact, if I aim for those dots with my thread, I can bury my little cream cotton in there and no one will notice it instead of changing I can certainly catch this guy with cream and you would never see it in there that one is now secure 
Okay. Just coming up here. Catching those. Now I might just pop one in the center and then I'm going to jump back up into this little guy. Couple little stitches on this side edge and then I'm back up into this white one. So let's carry along. Be confident I can take his pin out and that pin out. So let's now scoot back up through the center. I've only got a little bit of thread left, so. Oop, don't catch that pin. And that's exactly why we do this, because you will spend your whole time untangling yourself short. I'm pretty confident I can get a couple more stitches and then I think we would need blue next. So I can go over here and catch that and maybe even into the center of this decorative Better end it off. I think I'm pushing my limits there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to grab this blue thread next, and I might just Go around the perimeter heading into this zone and that'll catch this fabric over here. And I can just do a stitch right up that edge. I can so see more of this style of stitching in my future. It's just one of those projects where I, I don't have to think too hard. There's still a creative element. It gives my brain, I guess, a little bit of time out. Explore a new culture. I'd love to do some camphor quilt work. But I haven't yet because I'm a bit concerned that it'll be heavy going on my fingers. You know, I do a lot of embroidery and I don't want to sustain injuries. I need to embroider a long time along yet. So I need to just have a think, good think about the camphor quilt because I can do that style of stitching in smaller areas or, and maybe piece it together instead of that classic metres and metres of stitching. So, yeah, that's sort of, if you're wondering what my reasoning is for picking projects a lot of it is you know wear and tear on our fingers and that doesn't even take into account the times I stick myself with a needle goodness I tell you and it's the moment I stop concentrating now I go off on a bit of a mind wander and that's when I get myself Let's just get this little guy a bit more thread. And away we go again. So where do I get to? There. 
sort of coming along this top edge now. A couple little stitches here and there. And that is not going anywhere. Okay, I think my stitch would show up on that. So I'm just going to scoot along the edge there. I have this paler thread, so I could probably do that. Or I live with a pin or two and I just go straight into the boro stitching there and that will secure it. Because most of my bits will be you know, okay, just go around this little morsel, get rid of that. Plus I can stitch this fellow down, which will catch that guy without having to even really probably worry about the thread. And then I can get some cream thread again See, I'd be pretty confident that's not going anywhere. It's a bit flappy here, but I'm not too worried because I'm actually stitching it via these little pieces. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. All right. Might see if I can scoot over here. It's a bit of a jump on the back, but... Who will know if I can get a stitch down into here? I'm pretty confident. We are there. Okay. All right, a bit more cream. I'm just going to go around that bit. I guess now as I consider my next layer of stitches, this piece of fabric here looked really good when my Boro stitch went, sure I say my sentence, yeah, when my Boro stitch followed the pile stitch so that means it would go this way so therefore I think I've got two options I stitch in opposite so the stitch would go this way and this would go this way or I stitch it all in one straight through and if I did that I could continue right through catching this dark blue as well so that whole bottom corner would be stitched how would that look it's very camphor quiltish Then do we stitch this guy as well? And it follows right through. Or do we break up the eye and have that go the other way? Do we do we do it like a patch? Oh, this is it's fun, isn't it? Thinking it all through. Let me just get this last couple stitches in. Like so. I'll just catch him over here. He's jumping around and I don't want to have the corners flick up and get damaged because I've caught it on some stitches, so I'm just going to whiz around the outer edge of these little guys and secure them down. I'll feel a bit happier. They're a bit safer. 
Okay. Now, how are we going for time? 15 minutes. Awesome. So everything is secure. All my pins are gone except for that little guy there. I think what we'll do with him is we will just stitch him down with this subtly very small little stitches and then we will do some X's in him I think and that'll be our little feature up there we could do really small X's we could do one big one we'll get to him but let's just get him down so that He's not in our way with that pin. So I'm just going to do the tiniest of little stitches. One. Number two. Yeah, you can't see it. That's great. Beautiful. I think the top corner, this piece, is just going to be framed like we did with, for example, the dragonflies, just a, a border. So that'll be easy. I can do that for homework. I won't bore you with that. Then this straight boro stitch. Got a couple options. We can make the background all one stitch and then look at each individual little piece and stitch them accordingly. Or we can blend a few of those little pieces in with the big background so it looks like they've been mended together, is my theory. I think the little white piece is definitely this overcast stitch. I like the fact that that will be a little morsel stitched in there. And I'm even tempted to do that to this little guy. I think that'll be quite pretty. So those two will be overcast stitch. This little guy here but it, we've sort of included him before and he was just stitched. So he's pretty, pretty, sorry. He's very pretty with just stitching through him. So I guess my question is, do we, this fellow here, I think I'm going to leave as just a morsel, just with a little overcast stitch that's hidden and it's just a little textured piece. I'm not going to stitch him. But this, I'm thinking, should have stitches through. And then do we catch that as well? I'm thinking yes, all the way through there. Then I guess the question is, when we get to this point, do we keep stitching? And the background... has lines right through which is what I think we will do okay so that's that's what the plan is so I'm going to draw some lines on because I think it'll make it a bit easier for me to ensure that I get where I need to get properly it's a good way of making sure your lines are all going to line up. You're going to catch all these little morsels on your way. You don't have to, but I started the project doing this, so it's sort of enjoying the fact that I have a bit of control over all these little stitches. So, for example, this little stitch can come in here, no worries. And because that's crepe, I'm going to try and catch the next one in there, right on that edge, and that'll really lock that down. <clears throat> then there'll be the next one will go through there, through 
Okay, now I like that. Yep, that lines up well with that little blue floral piece. And that can come through there. Go through there. It's just a guide, I think. I'm probably overthinking it all. But I am enjoying fiddling with it. And this one, oh, that's perfect. This one will come through right on that edge, catching this little guy. So that's not going to fray then. Yep. Then away we go again. Through here. Can't see it on there. And then we'll catch this edge here. That's good. I like that. We are going to secure this nicely. We're going to secure that little guy there nicely with all of those stitches. So what I might do is I'm going to thread up. I'm going to break a few rules here and it's not going to be one continuous line. I'm going to put in the key lines to really hold my piece down so we're going to catch this edge here first then I know everything is safe and tacked down yep Oh, that's good. That's popped up right where we can make a nice stitch to hold that corner from being damaged. This needle is a different one to what I've used through the entire project and it's a little bit fine. So I need to find where my other needle is. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with some injuries out of this one. It's just a little, it's not a beading needle, but it's... It's a darning needle and the, it's just a little bit bit pokey there. It's going to cause me grief. Okay, now I can scoot through here. Oh, that stitch is huge. Look at this one. Oh, goodness me. I started thinking about my day and that's where it went pear-shaped. They say it's meditative. meditative. You know, you can zone out. I zone out too much and I start thinking about my to-do lists and then I jigger up the stitch. So the whole meditating idea is not good for me. Okay. Put it down, girl. You're starting to pucker. I'm getting to the end of the video and I'm starting to get a bit rushy that I'm going to get enough done. So I'm going to come up now on this edge over here and scoot down through here just to make sure I catch the edge of that pale of blue. Come on. There's a slight little westerly wind today. It's just there. It sort of makes you think that there's a bit of a cool change coming. So yeah, happy with that. I don't even mind just that, you know. But anyway, stay focused. I'm actually going to end that off. And I'm going to pop up over the other side and secure that down because I just want to know that 
my stitches are in place so that I don't get any frayed edges. So I think I worked out I could do one right through here. So I'm going to use this last bit of cotton to catch that down. It's so fine, that little beigey fabric, that it just doesn't take much for it to disintegrate. I'm also going to track down some cordage, see if I like that, and that will then tell me if I make an actual strap. I don't know about the straps here. The strap's going to use fabric and it's, I don't know, I still feel a bit clingy to it. <laughs> it's valuable and I've only got morsels of things. So I don't have a lot of the, that's crooked. I don't have a lot of the um, fabric in big pieces. So well, I do, but they're not big, big pieces and I'd need a fair bit to create the two straps. I just don't know. If I had a jelly roll and I was doing a shabby chic, well, there'd be plenty and it's already cut at two and a half inches and oh, away you go, which is what I think um, one of the YouTube videos in my description goes through using a jelly roll. Feels like forever since I've watched them. But I did watch Stuart's video to see how he did his... Um, loops and I like the fact that he cut the two strips of fabric stitched around and folded them in half folded them in half again and then chop chop and he had his loops I thought that was really good you'll know what I mean when we have a play with that there we go so I feel happy that this edge is secure that edge is secure so I've just got to come through now and just add the rest of my stitches. I'm going to sneak in behind those little things there and catch the back. Don't know what I'll do up here yet. I will overcast stitch the decorative piece in there. Maybe do some X's there. I've got to whip around the outer edge, but basically I've got plenty to do. I'll see how I go with um, time today. Might get it all done, might not. So I guess we will catch you in the next video. There's my needle, that needle, put that one back. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you in the next video and we'll carry on. All right, guys, have a lovely day and I will see you all very soon. Bye for now.